Hello, friends. We're back. Are we back? Okay, there we go. Our faces have shown up. This is Shipbreaker. Stars of that number is revised. Episode 16. We're joined by our stellar sailors, uh, Quentin Alexander Polk IV, Van Dorn, Van V. Vantis, and Minerva. For this episode, it should be noted that I forgot to ask the players to have goals ready. So let's do that now. I'm not sure if you asking us in the past has ever actually made us be ready for go live time. <laughs> yeah, but what are you guys thinking? Crew goal, individual goals. What do we got? Gosh, what was our existing crew goal? Uh, uh, it was determine, determine if we your... were going to break our contract or not. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, is that man. still our goal? We still haven't talked to. I think we're going to <laughs> commit to the. We're going to like complete some form of the contract. Really, the only question is. <laughs> Technically, your goal is to determine your adherence to the contract, which gives you okay. some leeway between zero and a hundred percent. That's fair. AP, did you just see the, the game that James is playing just pop up for you on Steam? No. Is it Power Watch Simulator? Would... Yeah, I never thought I'd see a game named that. There's a Warhammer 40k map that just came out. That's why he's playing. Power Wash Simulator? Yeah, you go Power Wash a Space Marine Battle or something like that. Okay, okay. I'm it. literally thinking Power Washing Simulations. That's what I was like, what that, the that's what no, it that is. is what it is. Yeah, I'm so confused. Yeah, no, like you can exactly. be on a playground and just like clean slides and stuff. Like, like that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, so you're, you're oh 100% gosh. correct. That's, that's crazy. It's yeah. one of the most popular stream games on the internet. Uh, is this like that goat just... simulator that just took off? <laughs> that just took goat simulator just, took off years been... ago. I know, but oh, man. it's the same thing. It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, the good news is, is Power is Watch similar. Simulator is still huge, and Goat Simulator is a meme, so... Good. Good. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm batting don't a thousand Don't try to right distract now. us from the fact that you don't have your goal. Okay. I want to exp <laughs> I want to convince the crew to go to Scarfy. Okay. All right. I like that. Interesting. Undetermined time. <laughs> <laughs> Undetermined. I mean, that's your short-term goal, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so basically, Scarfy, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, depending on how long the job takes. Um, Who yeah, says I mean, you I guess... can't go home, my friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the your cap father, the right? captain will say whether you can oh. go home. Or not. <laughs> What's the worst that happens? We split the party. <laughs> split the party? You and what ship? <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to take like that's true. I can't even take like a a. a... No, there is no ship that goes that way. Never mind. <laughs> Gonna have to Bandy steal the Delta Flyer the spike drive again, Tom. in the the cruiser and then steals it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that would be an insane plot line though. Like <laughs> if he really did that, like that's an expanse level plot line for a single <laughs> yeah. person to be like I'll help you get the ship running and then when like everybody's the day before the ship's ready to launch I, that literally happened in the expanse actually <laughs> never mind yeah this is straight up an yeah. expanse plot line it'll, it'll be just like in the last episode of last of us in the hospital that that's what will happen and then I'll take the ship um, and, and see you later I'll only need I'm recognizing one that you haven't played the last of us and you've only seen it on HBO then correct interesting interesting I haven't seen it, but I have played it. So you said episode, and I was like, hmm, I thought they were called chapters, but no, wait. <laughs> I know what he's referencing. You can't fool me, though, Dynamis. That's you why can't. I didn't say anything that happened. I just you specified no, no, you for You can't those continue to shuffle me away from goals. I insist that we, we get will. back to the goals. Yeah, I mean, I got mine. I'm good. <laughs> oh, I'm giving gosh. everyone else time. You do. You do. Yeah, I mean, I, crew goal, I'm still comfortable with essentially completing the contract in one way or another. Uh, oh, I think we're completing. past that. I think we're past that. There's That's fine with me. Worse. No, I think we're at zero to 100% here. You're in no here. danger of failing the contract at this point. You're literally well, on the true. last leg. That's true. <laughs> I think we're I, at the I zero to 100% thing still. I you guys a lot of leeway with these goals for XP, but... Uh, what's a good one, then? Um... <sighs> I'm going to say it now. McClay 8, you can pick my next goal for next session. Sheesh. You, oh, listen, boy. That, you is, that can Solaris be danger Knights, moods. You have to know that giving the audience power over your character is a massive mistake. I was the light, I was the light guy. Unbelievable. You gave uh, more people than anyone. to you, too. Yeah. 
I guess Quentin's short-term goal will be to, I guess we can update it because we are more or less done with this, uh, to to getting to know Dr. Fish uh, uh, better uh, or integrating her into the crew or, you know, finding out more about her, I guess. Get to know Dr. Fish better. And we got some Minerva goal. So I'm torn between two ideas. The first is to have an updated conversation with the captain about the wall in my head and my new friend mm -hmm. <laughs> and try again to convince him to help me with that. Uh, and the other is to try to, uh, try to learn more about Iona. Which way do you want to go? You guys are like, I want to meet more of the crew, be more friendly. And I'm like, fuck that. I want to go find my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to try to uh, learn more about Iona. Okay. And that Krugel, what is it? Where is it? I mean, I'll still allow determine your adherence to the contract, but if y'all want to switch it up, make something else more important to you. I'm fine with keeping that mostly because I can't think of anything better right off the top of my head. We are going to need to sit down and figure out there's no way they can pay for all of this. We could do something uh, along the lines of figure out how it is we started the drug war or whatever it is. Get more information on that. <laughs> that, that involves all of us, not just one of us. Yeah, the rumor of a drug war. What did we do? How did we do yeah. it? <laughs> how screwed are we? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Somebody's probably going to call in some sort of, you know, negative favor, right? Is that what it is? When you fuck up while getting a favor from someone. Okay. Sometimes I'd say more than, oh, you know what? Before I get into that, I should note, I did post on Discord in, in the Talk to the Cash channel uh, a link to a YouTube playlist, which will change the way you look at this game if you watch it it will essentially be something like a reverse spoiler uh just know that it is one of the greatest long-term jokes i've ever played this entire show <laughs> if you watch that playlist you can never go back <laughs> This is right after I told you I have struggled not clicking the spoilers in the Blood Ball channel. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Sometimes we get those pre show little scenes, but instead it is uh, an acoustic cover of Wonderwall. As it's like uh, the scrub style stop motion camera where like you're blurry and then for a half second you're like opening a technical manual very obviously and then you're blurry again and it's just the camera flowing through the ship as as all six members of the crew are all moving around doing things helping either support each other or prepare the ship to cut open the uh I don't want to say the name of our own ship. <laughs> the Edith, Edith Skinner. Yeah, so Skinner. we see, yeah. like, um, we get an exterior cut of the salvage arm, like, slowly rising and then, like, coming over and then slicing um, a rectangle out of the ice just so that you can get full access to the ship. And uh, the, the drill arm, like, melting away the ice around the ship so that you can fully get contact and... He's setting up, like, ropes so that no one accidentally falls into the hole and stuff like that. Just all the prep you'd need to get done to get started on the real savaging job. So I sent all of you the list of what needs to be done to finish this job. We don't have to do that now. It's ready when you are ready to begin. If you, you aren't ready to crack this ship open yet, if you think there's more to be done or conversations to be had first... Now is the time for you to take the reins. Almost like you guys picked goals that would help us with that. <laughs> yeah, so I guess where are we coming into the episode? We finished up last episode, uh, right? Like, you know. 
there was a lot of talk were. about yeah like how uh this is far more than i think our employers expected and what we were going to do to maybe not be entirely genuine genuine with our completion of this contract or how much we were going to try to negotiate yeah so the reactor was 400k the spike drive was 100 or that might be reversed but i believe that is uh, i had them reversed correct. but i could have had the notes backwards too yeah. so i'm putting it in discord right now okay we'll have to get started <laughs> I do have the link as uh, priceless, you. meaning zero dollars. Yeah, and then so the VI and then Prism, yeah, is like twenty four. So the major question million. was, are we going to try to like sit and hand that part over or break it down? Can we scrap it for parts essentially and like break it, but still still hand over useful technology? I think we came to the conclusion that we were not going to give them the VI Minerva. I believe that's the case. Uh, I had already erased it from the ship. Right. But didn't tell us. No, no, I did. No, that you kept a copy you, on yourself. Yeah, you oh, had... yeah, no, I didn't mention that at all. But uh... yeah, <laughs> that's the part. <laughs> Let's be clear about not being clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we'd had some conversation <clears throat> about the prism, about whether or not we were going to keep it intact or if we wanted to make it just raw material and try to sabotage the system. Mm -hmm. So, so captain, here, here's where my head's at. We, we committed to getting them the spike drive and the fusion plant. And that's about, that's about 500,000 right there. The other components that we got, right? The link, we can't exactly tell them about the link because that reveals that I'm dust, right? Because otherwise we'd have no way of knowing that would work. Or someone amongst us is dust. May not be me specifically. Right. And then we've got cultural warfare or this VI Minerva. We we kind of agreed that that's too powerful to give to them. And then we've got Agreed. this prism that we know they can't afford. So I guess I'm trying to figure out with these... <clears throat> I guess really with, with, with VI Minerva and Prism, are we just straight up not telling them and not trying to collect on that 20% and we just keep it? Or as are we... As requested, I deleted the VI from the ship. Oh, that's right. You're right. So that's not a problem anymore. It's gone, right? There's some written and digital records still, things like the log that was recovered and all of the physical records that are in the room. Uh, I guess, so I guess whenever I'm just trying to figure out, is there any way they could backtrace that? Uh, well, we can confirm and show them that we deleted it and it doesn't exist. We found a powerful cultural warfare weapon and we, we just said it's gone. Right. We well, can how show much them do that. you, how much do you wish to divulge? Well, that might be uh, one we omit. It feels like, but, um, I guess I'm just looking for a leg to stand on. If, if we do get challenged on it, something that we can show and be like, Hey, no, look, you're not we, wrong. That's, we did that's... it. I mean, if you wish to make it harder to be challenged on, instead of merely leaving empty data storage, I can destroy the data storage. I would uh, prefer we try to cannibalize some of that stuff. It'd be possible to create some extended capability for myself on the Golden Goose. Wait, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand the difference there. What's the difference in deleting the storage and destroying the storage? Either way, the content's gone, right? Well, let me ask you a question. Oh, uh, shit. If you, it, if you went into a room and the room looked like it had been immolated and there was a destroyed filing cabinet in the corner, you would not be surprised that there wasn't much to read in there, correct? Well, shit, yeah. But if you walked into an immolated room and there was an intact, untouched filing cabinet and it was just empty... Would you not have questions about that? So you're saying we should blow it up. I agree. No questions. Or we can remove the filing cabinet altogether and repurpose it for ourselves. But uh, in either case, leaving it as is may raise the questions you don't wish to answer. Well, I mean, do we even have capacity on the goose to take some of these storage drives? 
I mean, <laughs> are we just going to fill depending up the cargo on... bay with them? Because I feel like that's also sp- suspicious. I mean, depending on uh, what we do with them, even just taking some could give us material to work with to try to expand m- to expand my capabilities. Well, I, how much do you think you need, Minerva? Because I mean, there's a lot here. We, I think, you're the one that told us there's so much here we can't fit it on the goose. I'm just bringing it up as as a possible suggestion. The more hardware I have access to, the more things that I can do. <clears throat> Isn't that equally auspicious? If you walk into a room and half the filing cabinets are gone, but the other half are still there. Yes, I. Well, I'm not suggesting we leave any of it behind. We destroy yeah, what I mean, we don't take. I'm inclined to lean towards scrapping things for for parts and you know reducing them to valuable components as much as possible. Uh, over you know grabbing physical items in, in this regard, but um, if you see something that's useful and that you think is worth doing, certainly we could do so. I, the one the major question for me, I think we talked about it right is. How much can they actually pay? How much is it actually worth for us to even, uh, you know, propose? So, <clears throat> and I'm curious what happens to the things they cannot pay for. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, is that they they do have some money. They offered five hundred thousand for Van V to to do the install work, if I'm remembering correctly. It was a hefty sum. And, <laughs> you Maybe know, we so asked for... Yona to do some some of that. Searching on that interweb stuff for Kalanam, see how much they're worth, their net value. <laughs> yeah. I guess we that could said, do a quick is, is uh, an equivalent uh, of a history research check? role on that. What would we know about <laughs> Kalanam's finances? Do you want to ask her to do that? I, I, Someone I think, more aren't. I think Van V <laughs> would start to pull up to a desk like he's going to do it, assuming Minerva would already have it done by the time he starts to hit the first key. <laughs> I mean, if I wanted to try to look into that from here, what would I even, like, what business. sort of business, huh? That's not a skilled in administer. It isn't. Ooh. It used to I've be. administer zero. You're better than me. Well, is it going to be an intelligence roll? Yeah. A plus one to that. Yeah, Captain might want to look into the finances. <laughs> how about, how about, I know. <laughs> Can I roll administer to to decide what I think about their finances? Sure. Mm-hmm. You have extremely serious doubts that they are going to be able to make payments to you. Mm. You start going over files. You're noticing that they don't have trade with anyone else. They're only form of outside contact appears to be <clears throat> through embassies on the exchange of light station <laughs> doing business with them is uh blocked with most of the major governments okay they are, uh, communists it should be mentioned they are communists as well so the right. concept of capital is quite different than you're just looking through this paperwork and you have uh, eyebrow raising doubts that they can actually even finish this job for you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, just for the folks at home, in case you're listening and not watching you roll to five, I just want to make sure that <laughs> that's on the table. Here. This was a very easy roll or for <laughs> <laughs> the five. Does it matter? <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll never know. I don't know those cards. Um, but we yeah, did so to see him. <laughs> we just bit. didn't roll well. <laughs> we did not. No. So I think this what that kind of says uh, to 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 me. I think what we need to do is is at this point we we know the work that we have to do. We've mapped out the ship. We can see what we've got in front of us. I think we we reach out to them. We let them know that there's a huge job here. There's there's a lot of value, you know. We and we need some assurances in terms of what their max payout is and how much work we can invest in this or should invest in this. And then use that to sort of gauge the 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 alternate outcomes. Maybe in that discussion, we can actually negotiate to say, "Hey, we'll get you what you want out of this, and then you know, you just let us parts this thing ourselves, and we we sell it out, and that's where we get our twenty percent value." Uh, you know, if they have some issue with actually paying, and we can maybe request payment up front 
uh, at this point, given that we can, at least for the reactor and the, the spike drive, and then deliver that, you know, to get some reassurance on the finances side, I guess. Start there. Uh, I'm assuming there's, there's like the technology to say, like, we have your parts, give us half now. When we get there, give us the other half. Does that like type of like wire transfer exist? I mean, that's called oh. extortion and it would absolutely be breaking your contract, but. But, uh, but does the we technology have your exist? Parts? Yeah. Pay us half now? What the- yeah, I'm just more, I'm just more asking about Don't the- give me that face. I'm just no, no, I was just trying like, to understand what the concern was. No, because like what we what I had proposed was not not we have holding the things now. hostage. What just, I had so, proposed I mean, was I was in lieu of the payment, example, they let us does the sell the rest exist? of the parts so, after we get them the components that they need. I'm, yeah. I'm confused as to what you mean by does the technology exist? You mean can you call them on the phone and ask them this? Like if they wanted to wire yeah, transfers a, money, could they? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the we'd be able to see it happen in the bank. The bank has Right. guaranteed this job that's why you said i just that. wasn't sure if because of the system being so low tech if that impacts the surrounding no economics of like wire Flies through space yeah we're low tech i would point <laughs> out that this isn't the first job you've done and it's the first one where a bank official has sat down with you in order to make uh, sure that things okay were clear that makes sense smoothly there's also okay. uh all that interference so in order for us there to have is. a reliable conversation with a ship in orbit, we might have we're to take to, off. We're to there was to one yeah. satellite in orbit, as I recall, that was it's an exchange, exchange of light, light. satellite. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That we could. So, I mean, we okay. could we could try to load the the fusion plant and see if we can grab the spike drive, take them into orbit for that part. Their you know their minimum, and then mm-hmm. talk with them in person about what to yeah. do about the rest of the salvage. Yeah. I, Might I suggest we just do the fusion plant? Uh just in case they have something planned on their part, given the captain doesn't think they have the money. Uh leave the valuable part behind for us to go get and fetch for them after. That sure, way I mean we could think about you, we can, you know we could bring in examples of the scrap that we can find and try to work on that twenty percent. But I re- really sounds like we're aligned. Don't talk about Link, don't talk about Minerva, don't talk about Prism. Is bring what scrap we can, bring a fusion plant, and say we'll do one more trip, get you the spike drive, and then our our deal is complete. Well, I think part of what we're going to be asking is, you know, how much they actually can invest in this because we will pull more scrap out for them, right? And it's just a matter of how much more can they actually afford. Yeah, and, I'm, I'm uh, just thinking it's a lot more suspicious if we come up, give them both their parts, then we fly back down. Versus we come up, we give them one of the parts, we'll say we couldn't fit them both, we'll go get your other part, and then fly back down. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with splitting it up, you know, it didn't make sense to me to to bring one of the things they want at the very least uh, when we go up to so essentially finalize the, the shape of the deal and make sure that we can confirm payment. That makes sense to me. I, I'm just, I just don't want to give them everything they want up front and then they watch us go back to the planet that seems awfully suspicious which it well, should be you know i mean depending and, and on the result can, of the can, negotiation we could be going back down there to rip out bulkheads for them yeah but and if they're not interested they're, in paying for the rest of the wreck then we're going down for something that's no longer being claimed possibly would the bank think that way no it's still there yeah legally it's still theirs yeah if they if they wish to end the job at that point no no i think van van b's got a point we leave at least one of the things they still want behind so that we have a reason to go back understood just trying to maximize you they do have to pay you some form of forfeiture right okay that's why i think we we load up on scrap to work towards that 20 percent. we load up on the fusion plant bring it up and say we can get you the spike drive. We just need one more trip and more scrap, and just see what they respond with. Yeah, I think that's roughly the shape that makes sense to me. And then each trip after, maybe we try to sneak on part of that prism. Uh, did the link have anything physical, or is that just software? This it has it's got to be transmitters. Component. Yeah. Which Minerva's already like removed at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, I've already had a wall though ripping it out of the walls. He said it was going to take right. twenty four hours to do that. Yeah, so that's and it's going to take us time to rip the power plant out, anyways. Mm-hmm. Oh, then maybe we start with the spike drive instead. Whatever's, I mean, they're both going to take time to rip out of the ship. Yeah, but my point was only that the uh, 
the link system will likely be finished being removed before we get the either the fusion or the spike drive out of the ship. Yeah, and, and I don't know. Do we have secret stowaway spots on the the goose? No, I don't have smugglers. Yeah, or... then I'd I'd say we leave them there. <laughs> yeah, agreed. We can leave any of that stuff behind. The Han Solo yeah. hiding spots for that trip. <laughs> I, th I think there is a ship fitting for that, but you don't have it. Yeah, right. there is like yeah. a smuggling compartments thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we 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 built this ship on our crew. We decided we're going to be the good guys every step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, dangerous technology. Contracts. This is exactly why AI struggle. Are we still the good guys if we're protecting everyone from themselves, but lying to do it? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it sounds like we have a plan then. We're, yeah, ripping, like, I think fusion, so. we're ripping the power plant out. Yeah, we're going to commence with the power plant ripping and essentially associated components along the way. Uh, and, how, uh, how much? Uh... We'll make that delivery. Yeah, I think I think we we like you know we trust. How much do we talk, trust Doctor Fish? Do we tell her all of this? I mean, yeah. There's, I don't know. Uh, we'll, there's we'll... a significant amount that I would prefer Doctor Fish do not know. Or did she... For now, I mean, the way I look at it, Doctor Fish is um, you know onboarding type of situation. We don't know what her permanent you know, or you know Probation not period. so permanent Guys. status is. We we are helping her get out the door because that's what she wants and uh you know i'm inclined to help her so but i don't think we have to explain every detail of the current job that we're on you know all right i'll let you two do the talking to her then sounds good sounds good so yeah i guess uh whichever i guess whichever between the fusion plant and spike drive is ready to transport first is what we'll load up onto the ship and yeah. then a bunch of random scrap with it. That's the plan. Are you ready to start rolling? I, th I think so. Yeah. We got that table of rolls to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> you might, might want to talk to our um, other friends first. Well, I guess we could chat with Dr. Fish and, and you know, pr prior to this or okay. essentially during. Who is going to talk to Dr. Fish? Uh, Quentin, I, I will do so, yeah. Fish has her door open to her bedroom. He is openly chatting uh, in a video link. You recognize at least one of the people, and you think you can probably recognize the second person that she's talking to. Uh, it looks like the inside of a pretty cramped shuttle with a bunch of crates in the back. Um, one of them is Mr. Skinner, who you met at the hospital wearing a suit. The second is another person who has a shaved head with a bunch of Trinity Corporate Alliance tattoos that you think is Skinner, the pilot, who Van V spoke to very briefly on the incoming run. And there's a third man also with a skinned head with the Trinity Corporate Alliance tattoos. He's wearing modified coveralls with the sleeves ripped off. And beneath that, he's got the collar of a um, plaid shirt, like a, a nice dress shirt, boots, a wrench, a bunch of electronic equipment, a pocket protector, calculator, a compass. Uh, she just says, all right, um, look, that's a very generous offer, Mr. Skinner. I'm not really sure what I'll be doing, but um, if I need something to fall back on, I'll talk to you. You'll be my last resort, and I mean that as respectfully as I said it. And he chuckles and ends the call as she swivels her chair to look at you and says, Captain, what can I do for you? Oh, just checking in. Uh, we've been a little bit busy. Um, yeah, more than a little bit busy. Figured I'd see how you're holding up. And uh, sure. I mean, has she gotten job offers? Uh, yeah, something like that something like that 
I mean, you must be pretty busy to be waking me up in the middle of the night to answer one question, but yeah. We did do that, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, it's uh, a little bit difficult, right? Like out there in space, getting synced back to, to on planet time. I, I honestly sometimes don't know whether I should be getting ready to sleep or not. We, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, apologies for that, but. What can I help you with? Well, I guess, you know, that's that's a great question. So you're on the ship. We're, we're getting ready to complete the salvage job. Is there anything you've ever done in that realm? Anything you feel inclined to help with? I've been a hospital administrator for the last 18 years. I'm also so no licensed paperwork. to practice medicine in this system. Fantastic resume, of course. Yeah. Uh, so what you're saying is no, not a lot in this particular realm. But... I read detective novels, <laughs> and I'm not good at fishing, but okay, I can get by. All right. I like a good detective novel myself. <laughs> Did you... <laughs> Sorry, it's not clear to me. Am I supposed to be working to maintain my spot on this ship? No, not specifically. It's just a matter of, you know, if you needed something to keep busy. Like like I said, it's not been it's been a weird I don't know. What's the time frame here it's been that I'm talking to you in, but that time frame. You've been and... here for one day. Yeah, yes. okay. <laughs> it's been a long day. I... <laughs> you know, it's a traumatic event. Like you you seem to be holding up pretty well, but yeah, are you sure you're, you're just ready to jet on out of home? There's nobody you got to get back in touch with, make sure it's okay? I I don't have any family left, and uh, I, I don't want to spend the last years of my life in prison. You know? Sure that's what's going to happen? I mean, you, you saved a lot of people. I feel like I've earned a comfortable retirement, and I'd like to get there. Okay. I mean, hey, it's your choice. We can certainly use the use you. I'm not upset about it on my end, but it's a big decision. It's a decision I made maybe the moment I saw that column of smoke and fire. Yeah, all right. Big events, big change. I, I get it. Um, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but look, if you need you someone know. to look over your workflows, optimize your processes, see where you can save a buck or two, I can take a look at, uh, what you're working with, but I'm afraid that might be the only thing I can lend to your process besides putting someone's arm back on. <laughs> well, that would be incredibly useful, uh, if needed for sure. Um, yeah, no, we might forward some. You know, some paperwork, some forms, some some spreadsheets your way, if you don't mind taking a look, of course. Sure. I assume that if I participate, I get a cut in the job? <clears throat> oh, hey, you know, if you're on the crew, you'll you'll get a cut, of course. Uh, coming in late in the game on this one. So, you know, we'll have to figure that one out. But generally speaking, everybody gets an equal share, so. Whatever you think is appropriate. I appreciate that. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to reading. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll catch you later. Wanders Awkwardly away. secures an administration role. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> After just taking a, what, a four-way split and making it a five-way split just like that. Granted, she's been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, didn't promise her any huge amount of payout. <laughs> if she looks at spreadsheets, she's going to get spreadsheet money. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i hear it's time for a union on this ship <laughs> those Kalanons might not have such a bad idea <laughs> you know people pay for equal work <laughs> any other conversations Oh, I was going to go talk to uh, Iono, but I didn't know if 
uh, when we were going to do that role or not. Let's talk to Yona now. I mean, if you okay want um, to get her in on this situation, it may also be a good time to wrap that into the talk. Um, what is, what is she working on? Where is she on the ship right now? Uh, she is in her room. Are you using your cameras to see into her room? No. Okay. Um, Minerva said she would never she, do that again. Well, I said that you could, you know, ask to talk to Minerva and then she would, but otherwise would not be just compulsively looking at you in your private space anymore. <laughs> um, but I, think, I mean, it seems like it'd be an easy deduction. She's probably not outside freezing to death. And if I don't see her anywhere else on the ship, I'll, uh, I'll knock on, I'll knock on the door. Okay. After a few seconds, she opens the door. She has, uh, like a, a note computer in her hand and is using the like holographic system to turn the walls into whiteboards. Ooh. Uh, can I tell at all anything about what she's working on? Think without a roll, top level of what you're getting is that she is looking at some of the recovered binders and is trying to set up a timeline and is also investigating the jump gate. So there is no jump gate in this system, and there is no historical record of a jump gate existing in this system. And yet, you got a very clear message and at least one physically written report saying that these people came in on a jump gate. Um... So she is trying to trace back the astral uh, gravity of the system and like try to piece together any reports of like lost objects or things being destroyed or if someone towed it somewhere and it's hidden. Uh so she she is splitting her time between historical uh Dewey Decimal cataloging these somewhat horrendous intelligence reports on people, and the other half of her time she's spending trying to recover whatever gravitational orbital record she can in order to see if she can find a hidden object. I want to uh, be clear that at, at the rate she's going, doing calculations by hand with the marker, unless she's very lucky, this will probably take months. Uh, I do have no <laughs> zero. Could I roll to see if I get any more? Her interest in the jump gate is, from what you can tell, like, it's going to be a side project for her. Like, she doesn't seriously think that it could still exist, but it's not a bad theoretical exercise to warm up for something like this happening in the future that's somewhat more concrete. And in the offhand chance that she is right, you are basically insured infinite wealth and power. So yeah um let's see looks like you're making a lot of calculations do you mind if i do you mind if i look oh yeah sure what did you need oh i'm i'm sorry i just that just looked really interesting. I um, I was wondering if I could get a little bit of help with the job that we're working on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of my contract here. What do you need me to do? Well, considering your current academic interests, there are there is an interesting physical repository of records on the ship, and we do. We are trying to sort through all of those and figure out the disposition of them. There might be some more information that might be helpful for that, and there might be just some other really interesting historical records. Yeah, I, you know, I got what you guys brought back earlier. I think I'm a real stay-on-the-ship kind of crewmate. Uh, but 
yeah, if you place it in the cargo hold, I'll uh, I'll start processing everything and getting it sorted, categorized, tagged. Make awesome. a digital copy of everything. That'd be really helpful. Uh, I'm also trying to. Well, I'm trying to keep track of a lot of things at once. If there's uh, anything else that you think that might help, maybe helping us identify some shortfalls in some of our equipment, or maybe better ways we might be able to store more stuff for less trips. That'd also be pretty helpful. I can certainly try. Just anything you can do. Sure. If there's something that I've learned in the time I've spent here, it's that some of the things that I know how to do translate in unexpected ways. If you want any help with that, I could help you with some of the math if you want. But I'd understand if you want to do that, that your own project. I think that you may be better suited for this sort of work than me. Uh, if you want to take a crack at it, go ahead. Sure. And, you know, I'm not trying to take it from you or anything. It's just to help you with your project. Okay. It is just a raw intelligence check. Okay. See, here's where you forgot to carry the one. <laughs> Whiteboarding all over the place. Can I figure out how to just Double roll ones. the intelligence? How do you <clears throat> just manually roll, you know? Okay. Plus roll 2d6 plus. Uh, I do want to be pretty helpful. So I will use my extra processing point for the day to boost my intelligence. Well, well, well. And then I'll roll two ones. Or not. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Okay, hold on a sec. That's really high. <laughs> it's not the highest you could have possibly gotten, but it is quite it is high. high. It is good. <laughs> the jump gate is in the Edith Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Boy, that would be wild. <laughs> the jump gate is Grace Phantoms. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's a gay. <laughs> Good luck convincing Van Via that one. <laughs> I was just going to say, you sound like you're a light novel anime right now. My mom is a <laughs> jump gate. <All> right. <laughs> I'm not going to go through the technical details, but you delve into the programming, doing calculations that would take a human by hand many months in the matter of a fraction of a second. And you have come to a mathematically inexorable conclusion. The conclusion is as inescapable as the gravity that took the jump gate in. The jump gate is definitely on this planet. And if you okay. can't find it, because it should be giving off a signal, a pretty hefty signal, a psionic signal, that means that something is interfering with the materials that should be easily detectable, the psionic signal it should be giving off. Something or somewhere is hiding the gate on this planet. Now, that could just mean... Based on these calculations, it came down out of orbit on this planet. It could have just crashed somewhere and have been broken into a bazillion pieces. But jump gates were designed to have the sort of resilience to possibly survive such a thing. And if it was brought down, well, that means something quite different. Right. Um... The thing is... You would not be able to explain your mathematics to a human. You know, it's real black box algorithms. <laughs> quantum. Uh, Don't even quantum me. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you, we've seen AIs and the, the YouTube algorithm, people don't understand how it works. They just, they train it and they don't know what, what the formula is. You just observe true. what it might be. And then it changes by the time you get a grasp on it. Well, this is quite interesting. If my calculations are correct, at least debris of that jump gate should be on this planet. She raises an eyebrow 
you get the idea that she trusts you, but she doesn't understand how that's possible. Uh, if you would like, I uh, could display the work if you wish to go through it. Sure. Compare it against your own notes. Yes. I'll dump a data file with a gigantic pile of calculations in it. <laughs> yes. I'll review this in my free time. <laughs> if it is here, it's, it was either so, really, the only thing I see likely is it was either so catastrophically damaged being pulled onto the planet that it was not really much for us to have been able to detect without your interest in records or does enough intact components which seems more likely to me they were built quite robustly somebody may be trying to cloak its presence here hide it for later salvage and use i mean who has that kind of power this is a a backwater it's the backwater that does present the opportunity for Less observation in the work being done. I mean, you've handed her a puzzle that she thinks can't be true, and yet she trusts you enough that there is something wrong here. Uh, but if you find just, any just checking other... your work is outside of her capabilities right now. If you wish to remove or add variables to the math based on your on what you deem to be the likelihood of the validity or accuracy of the information, I can certainly do some recalculations for you. Let me get through what we've got here first. Of course. This is a really interesting project. Was there anything else you needed? I suppose not for now. I thank you so much for the help. Yeah, I mean, I got to get back to work cataloging, but yeah, you know, happy to be here. It's my job. Well, just let me know when you want another pizza. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be probably spending most of my attention on the other ship. I love this. Minerva only makes for pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> it's also it's kind of a reference, so <laughs> at this <Yeah>. point. <laughs> okay, that's a failure. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm rolling for your NPC friends. Uh, and that's a success, so they will cancel out. Uh, Iono has fumbled the ball, but fortunately Dr. Fish has taken Iono's work and kept it off of uh, production. Excellent. <laughs> 3D6, keep two Gs. All right. She's a hospital administrator. Her speciality is administrating. I kind of hoped, yeah. yeah. You asked her to do something that is directly in her wheelhouse. This is literally what I do, plus attaching arms again. That just <laughs> leaves you, Quentin. You're the only person who hasn't rolled an aid yet. Okay. Yeah. I will roll uh, lead then. Okay. For that. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about that. Well, Quentin will be like? everywhere, right? He is. So, is he? Is he only allowed to make one roll off this list? Yes, that's true. I, okay. And Minerva uh, already Psyon made programming. Yeah, I mean, psionic substitutions on there. If you want to try to use your psi powers, if you think you you're better with to, those, you would need to explain to me how that would be helpful in. Some yeah, ways. so uh, I could use those. Uh, I do have lead with the specialist, so I can roll three d six on that. The That's telekinesis true. and and teleportation, Quentin could absolutely use that in terms of like manipulating objects and moving things. For teleportation, he can move like up to eight hundred pounds and teleport it as long as he can touch it, uh, and it's like a single piece. And uh, for telekinesis, same thing. He can move a single thing that's like around 800, 900 pounds. I mean, for my money, teleportation is easily the most useful thing on this list. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, do we know? Which which thing do you want to roll? Which thing do you feel you have the best chance of success with? Does Louis have teleportation or any of this? Oh, yeah, yeah, Louis <laughs> has uh, <laughs> telepathy, I believe. <laughs> But um, I mean, is there like mechanically? What, what do what do we? What's the? So I can only roll one. I mean, two d six plus. I mean, what's your best roll? 
Oh, my best roll is, yeah, probably like the 3d6 drop lowest. Sounds like lead then. Yeah, that sounds right. No, no, don't listen. Don't let this motherfucker (laughs) pain. What would Quentin do? Your initial thought was to go in with lead. It was, yeah. So maybe you should do that, but don't do it just because it's your best role. <laughs> if you think, I just that thought it would be would... fun to entertain the idea of maybe the psychic stuff. Sure, but yeah. if you think that you'd be teleporting or telekineting, you could do that as well. Oh, I mean, that's the thing is that Quentin would absolutely be doing that as part of this this thing. Either way, it's just a matter of you know the coordination aspects, okay. uh, other pieces. Making sure everything's going where it's supposed to, checking the boxes, helping Van V with the checklist. Uh, Go ahead. You know, I don't Make know. Make your roll. You need an eight. All right. The guy over my shoulder is saying, now get this done. How do this I roll it with it. the like keep? So when you click on the 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 die next to the oh, skill name. Pool. There we go. Yep. Dice pool. Right. And then stat wise, would this be intelligence, charisma? And if you go to your skills charisma. tab there's an edit next to each skill, you can set the default for okay. your dice pool so that you don't have to keep doing the drop down. Okay, man, that makes the, sense. The great news is the difficulty wow. of your check has been reduced by two. Grave news? That sounds like great news. I said great. The great oh, I said <laughs> great <laughs> news. Great news. Sorry, I heard grave maker news. Fun. <laughs> Can you imagine what it'll be like if we face off in the playoffs again? <laughs> I score an affair. Oh, man. You can't get much higher than five zero, my friend. I know. Was, I was when uh, I saw that. I, I'm like, like, oh man. I had mixed reactions because, like, damn, good for the other statement, but damn, he's the highest scoring person now. <laughs> per single game, Mis- mixed reaction. Too funny. I think right. roll. Set now into me for pulling out the big wrench. So this is the start of sixty days of work, two calendar yeah. months. Right. Uh, would you say it's intelligence, wisdom? I think it's dexterity. I'll take that. They're all the same. Two d six. All right. Let's start fixing. Huh? Oh, oh that's and we had the minus good. two. That cr- that we got it. <laughs> right, hold on, hold on. Because Minerva can reverse time, just in case you weren't glad enough with that roll. <laughs> I'm satisfied with a with a. I just have one result. question: How <laughs> big is our how big is our hyperboat? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not the frame of the hyperboat. It's yeah, the yeah, parts yeah. inside to make it work. For uh, sure. How, okay. How many hemis do we have in that hyperboat? <laughs> So you have a <laughs> technically adjusted 15. So you can e you for, you can reduce the time by half to bring it down to 30 days. Uh, and if you would like to, you can drop from a 14 to a 12 to get the hyperboat. Oh man. Um, um, uh, we lose a component. So you'll have to choose which one to lose between spike drive, fusion plant, VI Minerva, Prism, and the um, the link. Mm. Can we one choose to take ones. the full sixty days and keep everything, or is that not on the table? You can't. You can do that, and you won't get the hyperboat parts. And you still don't get the hyperboat. Uh, yeah, we have to gotcha. drop a category to get the hyperboat parts. I wasn't sure if like the the cut the time in half. No. I gotcha. Okay. Shit. And the thing is, it's your choice, not the rest of the crews. Well, well. Oh. So yeah. here, here's, I'm going to stay here's, silent then, because I want to see what you decide. Well, here's yeah. here's a tough question though, because uh, as far as as far as I know, we wiped Minerva Vi, right? And so there's nothing left. It as part of this, whatever you choose to have dropped, if you do choose to have something dropped, something will have happened to it as a result of the entire crew's actions. Whether it's a power surge that wipes the Minerva BI, 
or whether it's a, a snowstorm with a collapse that damages the prism system beyond repair, something bad catastrophically will happen to keep one of the salvageable components from coming along. I think it's definitely between whenever VI and Link. I mean, there's no way he's giving up Hyperboat. That's just, it's just too, too much a part of what he is. <laughs> uh, from Van V's standpoint, he didn't really, I feel like the discussion with Minerva made him feel like the Link is a vulnerability, not, not a positive. And I feel like Minerva tried to sell you both ways. But the cultural warfare. See, I, I don't know. I don't know how to react to that one because in his in Van B's mind, right? Isn't cultural warfare? It's been destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. We wiped it. It's gone. But I'm not asking Van V to make this decision. I'm asking you to make this decision. Van V is not going. Man, which one of these parts am I going to fuck up? Mm, that's fair. That that's would fair. be. That'd be really funny though. I feel a compulsion to smash some stuff. Yeah. Well, that's what uh, well, we that's have two point. that are that's must a, haves. We know that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, it should be noted you also are taking the ship systems all intact based on what you're saying, which means you won't have any components to bank for modification. Right. Yeah, that is the other part of the question. Wait, explain that again. I'm not sure I follow that. So we have. So right now we have four stuff we can get. Whether yeah. it is a system that we've already talked about, or if it is a uh, other generic a, component, yeah, yeah for a, a relic yeah. component for doing the ship upgrades. All right. Well, I think, or any combination, we could say, you know, we get four, but we don't care about any of the ship systems. We just want yeah. four I see what you're saying. pre tech parts. Okay. Well, I'd say fusion combo. plant, spike drive, and prism are locked in. Like those three are just the given, right? Sure. Uh, one thing left. And what are the th possible choices again? Link, uh, link. cultural warfare, or other. <laughs> or a pre tech part. Or pre -tech a pre tech part, part yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, when you call it pre tech part, that makes it sound really good. <laughs> no, all that, remember how uh, Ludeman put that list of yeah, yeah. ship mods? Those There's all some... require us to spend pre tech parts. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because just, I know I'm not, I'm supposed to make this different from Van V, but Van V saw the link as a vulnerability and he thinks cultural warfare is just storage. So I think he would go with pre tech part. Okay. So you'll get one pre tech part, 60,000 in scrap and mm -hmm. uh, three systems Prism, Fusion Plant, Spike Drive. From a financial perspective, this decision makes absolutely no sense. But and the internal components for a hyperboat racer. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's not he's not going back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will also need to spend three thousand on uh stopping back in orbit occasionally to top off food, air, okay. uh heat exchangers, that sort of thing. Logged. Ask me to separate the player from the character. I don't know how to do that in the middle of this decision. <laughs> so we, we get another stop motion of just the salvage arm, like lowering down like a laser saw, slowly peeling away the prism system. Uh, the prism's pre-tech ultra thick bulk. That's like 90% of the work is getting the prism off, actually. Like yeah. physically removing it is designed to be nearly impossible. So... The drill takes forever to get through it. And once you're through that, like getting everything else out of the ship and just slicing the internal bulkheads up and teleporting them inside the cargo bay is super easy. Uh, so most of it is just slowly hard boiling an egg. And then the egg explodes at the last moment. Like the last day is where 90% of the work gets done. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, since we've got the plating off, we're looking at it. Aside from the built-in prism components, it being a hardened material, how does the hardness of that material compare to the plating on the Hosta? It is uh, harder. Okay. It is battleship armor rated. The 
hold on. I can go get you the exact number. I feel like after this session's over, I'm going to be told you didn't pay to see those cards at least three times. <laughs> you did pay to see those cards. It's an armor rating of 20. Oh, that's pretty so good. So you would need to deal 20 points of damage before the ship ever took damage. We're going to take a break now, friends. McClay 8. This is it. We got the full thing. We're done. We're bingo. Actually, didn't he leave a message? Let me let me go double check this. I feel like there was something about the comment last time that made me think maybe it was just that you guys get your extra XP. Is that what it was? Oh yeah. I, I remember that. that. Remember right. you did post you posted his comment. We have you to salvage another ship. So I want to see how this big, big checklist. What kinds of story elements you come up with if you spend a few weeks scrapping the ship? Ah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Don't worry about it, don't worry. We're going on breakdown. We'll be back in about five minutes. Oh, All yeah, shows is. just for McClay. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half. Well, after that rousing display of success, you are less successful than perhaps you could hope in your wildest dreams, but it is still technically the best salvage job you've ever had. And Certainly we found no one would stop at it. You nice. found the real Minerva? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> not, not, not this VI built bullshit one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the... the Empty ship you left out there intact on the backside of a moon orbiting a black hole. That salvage job? No big deal. Perfect. <laughs> We're good at this. Let's mark that one as incomplete for now, shall we? <laughs> we don't we certainly don't lack confidence, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan? Well, uh, essentially, like, you have a decision to, to make, load... Captain. <laughs> yeah, we do have a decision to make. We have to dis decide: do we inform them of the existence of Prism up front, or keep that in our back pocket and simply ask, like, how much on top of you know this basic scrap, or on top of the fusion and the <clears throat> spike, do you actually want? Uh, uh, Captain, I, f I feel like we have to put it somewhere like, listen, there's enough scrap down there where we could make runs all day long. We just want to know at what point is it, at what point are you, is it not worth us, you continuing to pay us for all the, the tech we find down there? Like, we got your two main parts. Yeah. Getting them and to tell I would, us, I wouldn't like, talk about, you know, in terms I wouldn't of say the it. negotiation, they're like high watermark first, I think is reasonable before we reveal how much value there might be. If we do, or were to, uh, yeah, this is still a tough I mean, one. <laughs> I believe if we don't disclose Prism and we wish to buy out part of our monetary share in parts for our own ship, then we could include the plating and say that it's just some plating that is more fit for a ship of our size that we would like to keep. I mean, Prism is fully in integrated. Just to be clear. Yeah. It would require lying to them and saying it's just super hard and plain. Just, I just wouldn't bring it up, Captain. Just don't, don't say it at all. Yeah. Especially considering the, looking at the relative value with that 20%, the spike drive and the fusion plant are, together are are a significant portion yeah for sure and they offered no but like they they did offer 50k for a manual from van v on how to install things or 500k to actually do the install if i'm remembering correctly it's funny how small 50k feels like now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Strange. so yeah i, I mean, suppose in, i mean just to I guess in Van V's free time, whatever that is, he probably would work on that, trying to say, all right, we got now that I've seen the fusion plant, I've seen the spike drive, I know what their ship looks like. Here's what I'm thinking. And he, he would involve Minerva in that process, trying to uh and then figure like, out what a plan would be to have them build it back together. Open question for Minerva. Would she like absolutely not 
allow like the prism to be given to to them or be sold to them. Uh, I will remind you, Captain, that while I have no problem giving you my opinion, even when we strongly disagree with each other, I have made an agreement that this is your ship. I might not participate. I will not participate in things that I find unethical, but I will also not interfere with your command of your vessel. So he had a memo in your inbox that says, this is your ship from Minerva around that time. <laughs> <laughs> that said, I strongly recommend we find a way to keep the prism. All right. Well, I think step one is we uh, get the fusion engine loaded up and take that on up and make our first delivery and start you, the conversation. You can fit everything in the ship. Yeah. Okay. Oh, everything everything well. is fitted inside the ship. You're totally done. Okay. Ooh, well, I kind of like the idea of give them their shit and see you later. <sighs> If we do choose to do anything to keep the prism that would be going at le in spirit or entirely legally against our contract, I would not recommend staying to do the install ourselves. That's more time for someone to find out. <laughs> Fully agree, Minerva. <laughs> Fully agree. <laughs> Fully agree. All right. Well, you know what? Here, crew, this is a crew decision. I, I feel like I need y'all to vote yay or nay on this it, will we in any way shape or form give them prism in a working fashion that's a nay that's a nay I, all right i think we're going to skip that then we will definitely not be giving them prism in a working fashion do we break it before we go up there we break do we break prism i understand that there is a risk in not doing so but it does present some unique opportunities for myself and for the golden goose well i'm gonna throw this out there is that there's you know this is an official job that the bank is going to come in and probably enter inventory these items themselves I, I have to imagine that this is not something that we are just gonna you know run the honor <laughs> system on so i don't know how we hide it from them well i imagine at the very least it is uh it is armored whole plating all right. That's is what there, we'll call it. We'll play. I don't down, know. I don't know much. I don't know anything about the skills of uh, the member of the bank or their disposition. I think. I think we got to bury it under piles and piles of scrap. <laughs> While we're having this conversation, uh, I would like to, as Minerva, sort of trying to explore and figure out this other Minerva. Uh, ask it to profile. You don't have the other Minerva. I do. It was no, no, but it it was lost as part of the salvage transfer. I know you copied oh, the Minerva, okay. but something happened: electrical fluctuation, <laughs> cosmic rays, Van V accidentally hitting the delete button on your trash bin. Something I was holding. Happened. I was holding the okay. shift key when I hit delete by mistake. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Give you a bad sector what, in that hard exactly, drive, but Van V is somehow responsible for accidentally destroying your copy of Minerva. <laughs> oh come on! Does Something Minerva happened. Know it's, I'm good with does, that. Does Minerva know it's Van V? This is a problem now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's likely. Here's what I know: yeah. you made a choice, Davis. Yeah, you made a choice. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> I don't know what sort of expertise or disposition. They have. Nor do I. So that's all I'm saying is that if we take this thing up there, there's somebody up there who might be able to identify it as something other than hull planing. I'm happy to play dumb on it, you know, to 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 start the conversation. But just just know somebody might know what this is. They may identify it, and that may be a big payday for us. Uh, I guess as long as we play dumb correctly, but. I well, can't guarantee that they won't get their hands on this thing. So is, I mean, it is the entire. It, it is a risk. It certainly is a risk in either case. I would just remind you the effort that it took for us to figure out that it was anything and what it was, and right. that that means doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, is there another? Possibly. I don't know. Experts are few and far between. I don't know what they will have. So is, is I'm the happy entire to roll those dice. This can be our plan. 
thing like just hull plating or is it like a command console that goes with it that you need to like kind control of like specialized with? things the like... electronic weave is built into the ultra thick hull plating and all of the programming is stored locally in each section wow really shit i mean that makes it it's added. fancy pre-tech yeah <laughs> and, well i was more thinking like it's all hull plating that's on the receiving end but there's still like a controller or sender and if we can hide that controller or sender in like eono's room or something no it's but... distributed processing mm, that's that's okay that's gonna be hard to hide i mean it has you... to do the calculations of what's on the exact opposite side of it observably mm -hmm. in order to hide a ship You basically have to hope they don't have anyone that detects that. Well, I mean, it's off, and I don't know how hard they're going to... Who? I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of questions we don't know the answers to. Yep, the only Before, other option uh, is that we, we literally leave this in a pit in the ground and, and we take everything else, so... Well, you know, sp speaking of our plans right after this, Captain, I was wondering, uh, where where are we going next? Like... Say we conclude our deal, everything goes the way we want, then what? I'm assuming we want to get out of town, right? Yeah, I think our business is done here, for sure. So on to the next thing, whatever that happens to be. I, I know I've got my priorities. There's a lot in, that we could do, but... Well, how about we go someplace that we know they can't follow us? I mean, I hope that they're not chasing when we leave that's that's I'm my just, goal you know i'm, just, I'm just thinking you know if if yeah i suppose that's more of a plan b right things don't go the way we plan and they start chasing us then we go someplace we know they can't follow us you know what i'm happy with that, that that's our ace in the hole i guess because <laughs> we i mean we are the only but to ones get there we the... have to jump we have to jump to back to where we were and then there right that's what we have the map for uh, I... You have a map that will take you to the black hole. You'll have to make a blind jump to the final system. Does the does do course runners right. matter where you start from or just where you're going to? It matters where you start from and where yeah. you end at. So we can get to the black hole and then we're going from there to like the next destination yeah. and we don't have anything for that. So that's like a blind like 12 or 14, something like that. Let's do it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh da, 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 da. okay i mean should we so let's load up go... on supplies fuel up now before we go meet with them if and we, yeah, i say yeah, we just yeah. bring everything with us all, all right, right. Yeah. let's do it go ahead everyone i mean would you would you really want to gosh i don't know i'm just weighing the options here cap what well, like if we bury this here say we put it in a chunk of ice or something i don't know do we want to leave prison behind just just on the, the hunch that they may not have anyone that can detect it. And then, then what we go back to the planet, that's suspicious. The only way that would work is Dr. Fish over here comes up with some reason for us to go back. No, I'm not saying we come back right away. I mean, it's, it's... <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're not, I, sorry, I, I forgot you're not as impulsive as me. No, it's, it, for me, it's a matter of, you know, if we don't want this to get into their hands, the only sure way to do it is to leave it behind. And then if that's a concern of ours, then that's what we can do. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll, I'm happy to play dumb. I I vote we, we bring everything with us. We don't let them take prism. We don't tell them about prism. And then we get out of Dodge. But I, I'm happy to hear what, what y'all think might be better. I've voiced my concerns. Whatever you feel is the most effective risk analysis, I will support your decision, Captain. All right. Uh, well, I I think the general consensus that was that we run the risk and we see what we get. So let's, uh, let's haul this thing on out of here. And uh, Minerva, now that we have the spike drive and fusion plant, maybe we can distract them by helping build a plan that tells them how to integrate it into their current ship. Yeah. Is it really a distraction to when I mean, we told them we were going to do this at the very least, correct? Uh, I don't, I don't know if we committed to it. They just said it'd be, you know, they'd pay us for it if we did it. I, I think 
maybe, maybe we, we do do it and we throw in, I don't know, just something that helps them that extra step. Maybe anything we can do on the fusion plant spike drive on the way to their ship, just to help get it ready for that type of integration. Something to give them to be excited about what they might overlook prism, you know, you know, a little you, bonus. If you wish to do so, I'll certainly assist you. Well, I, I could certainly use your help. That's for sure. No, you have it. Can you, uh, never mind. That's a dumb question. I was going to ask if you could pilot the ship out while helping me, but I know you can. It's, it's at this sort of takeoff, Mayor. Well, let's look at the weather. What's the weather like for us trying to take off and leave orbit? Carbon like to get into solid weather? is solid. I mean, are we in the middle of a storm or something? It's no, going to make the pilot go harder. Clear skies. <laughs> Okay. Mm. There is I rolled a seven. planetary interference, however. Uh, you know, it's difficult to detect signals beyond your immediate area. But you get a good 60 miles in any direction from this high up, and you don't see any storms. <laughs> you just see stars. Without number. You can say we rolled a seven <laughs> and have perfect conditions. The... Um... It doesn't appear that there's any sort of conditions that would require your expertise. I can certainly get us into orbit. Four through ten, by the way. Your name is four through ten. Not the big. Uh, it should be smaller. I want more chaos. But oh. you want more chaos? You should uh, be a cultist of Nuffle and just choose the weather. That's what I did in season <laughs> one. That is true. It's true. Sorry, it's a blood bowl joke, guys. It's a blood bowl joke. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> We, we rap men understand each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I guess we head into orbit. I'll help um, Van V put together the installation plan. Yeah. And the I, really, I don't know if there's spike drive. And I don't know if there's anything we can do to help like prep the fusion plan and spike drive that could like save, save time in the back end or if someone less skilled, it would take longer, but if we're focusing on it, it'd be easier to say, here you go. And by the way, we got it ready. One of the two of you can make a lead roll with a plus one assist from the other. I, um, I'm helping you. So, I mean, at least role play wise, it's your role. <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and do lead of all things. All right. Lead. What, lead uh, yourself. What does this lead with uh, intelligence? Uh, Charisma. Oh, man, you could. This is like the worst combination for Bambi. Let's do it. <laughs> Wait, I'm probably better at it, but I told you I was helping you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Time to embrace the role. The documentation <laughs> here is awful. First off, don't forget that plus one assist. <laughs> You you speak all major languages, so I think you try to write it in Russian, and just it's it, children's it's, grammar. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Like no one will be. A, you think it's great, and that it comprehensively <laughs> explains exactly what you need. In oh, fact, man, this it... is almost totally useless in every way. <sighs> And there's no one on the ship that can tell me it's useless, is there? So we're all like, oh, yeah. I mean, Jamie Minerva could download a Russian language module, but other than that. Perfect. This, Wait, this is going to go so well. Even Very if tall. we probably don't have time to make a good one, could I at least uh, like send it back to him with a gajillion like, edits and bubbles on the side to be like, this is this is a lot of work to fix <laughs> right click synonym yeah that sounds good right click synonym yeah that sounds good that's basically what he's doing <laughs> you Man. arrive in orbit of kalanon uh at mm -hmm. 11 a.m ship's time march 10th 3200 after a little touchy orbital mechanics, you manage to lock yourself in to a uh, a path directly adjacent to the Glory to Kalanam. There is a working docking clamp now with, uh, with aired walkway, which is extended on your arrival. Oh. We, oh, looks we're, like they're we're, making some upgrades, huh? I mean, we weren't expecting them to be idle for a month. <laughs> yeah. 
the would we know how long it sealed. should take to make that type of improvement? Like, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty reasonable. They were working okay. on it last time you were yeah. here. The hull is <laughs> functionally sealed and pressurized. It is the parts of it that are sealed are not armored. Like if this thing was to go into combat, it would collapse instantly, right? It's it's little more than plywood, but it's enough to keep everything. I don't mean it's literally plywood, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it is the cheapest, thinnest materials possible to keep everything that needs to remain inside the ship inside. It is no longer combat capable uh, on uh, anywhere it has already taken damage, which admittedly are the places of the ship you don't want to take damage, like the entire engineering right. bay. Just hanging out. <clears throat> Says as an ad around here says, your shed is made of particle board, and when it rains, it becomes fall of particle board. <laughs> That's what they got. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, uh, Cap looks like they they've been busy in, in a way. It almost looks yeah. like you know they're really banking on us to come through for them. So I guess you know good news all around. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I guess deliver that news make our way I make a Again. quick note on my my instructions to reinforce the, the whole in the, the the area there just trying to improve my notes a little bit <laughs> you find yourself in a conference room across from Alexander Nicholas Andre and Jennifer Nikolaevna uh, all of them are sitting in their various naval uniforms of different rank uh, they all rise simultaneously when you enter the room uh, Alexander takes off his hat first, and his sons and daughter-in-law all take their hats off as they wait to hear the news as to if and how successful you've been. Uh, Quentin gives them a, you know, like, nod, sort of, whatever, half kind of doesn't know what to do, not quite military acknowledgement. And, uh, well, we... We're incredibly successful, at least as far as we're concerned. We got what you were after. We got that fusion plant. We got your spike drive. And, uh, you know, as requested. Acolyte. Fair of scrap besides. Acolyte Yamin Gross stands up from the head of the table and moves to shake your hand and says, all right. Um, the exchange of light is going to confirm you have what you have. Would you prefer that we have a certified expert inspect your cargo bay? Or would you rather have a telepath? A te telepath? Confirm that you're not hiding anything. Oh, the I see. salvaging was successful. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you got the expert on on, on hand, I suppose you might well go might as well go with the inspection. We can have one here in six hours. All right, all right. Uh, that's probably the best case scenario. Yeah, all right. Of course, we'll Six just hours need is good. The access to your ship's logs, and uh, of course, unrestricted access to the crew and the cargo bay. Is that what we want? Oh, we can't have a telephone. Are you asking me if that's what you want? No, uh, this is no, me that was a head as a player. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, Minerva's in the room and he's listening to all this and is like, oh, logs yeah. wiped. Well, because like a telepath <laughs> would immediately know what Minerva is and that immediately complicates any situation. So we just like can't have a telepath involved, unfortunately. So this is really the only option. <clears throat> uh, sounds great. So, uh, Van V, uh, board that log over. You don't mind? We'll Yep, we'll we'll do Captain, and uh, I guess he'll probably like, open a data pad. Like... <laughs> he'll open a data pad and wait for like Minerva to point out a specific file of which one to send, knowing that Minerva's probably making edits on the fly. <laughs> I mean, how detailed? Like these logs are, are these just like? I mean, wait, they want to know your internal ship notes, like you know. Like anything, any paperwork you kept on the job, you know, your mm -hmm. internal invoicing, what you think you picked up, that your estimation of value and why, uh, it will be pretty hard to fake this. Yeah. Right. I mean, we probably loaded it up as 
hardened hole plating. You know, all the stuff we did was conversational. Sure. They're not they're not asking you for like video logs or anything, but Yeah, so are, I guess I'll they are send it over. Know. Okay. So sorry, what are you li is Prism on board the ship and what are you listing it as? This is your hardened. last chance to make any Prism is on the on the ship. We are listing it as uh, essentially hardened hull plating, uh advanced something of that nature, you know. Yada okay. yada. Six hours later, uh, a man arrives, greasy overalls, gas station ball cap. He's got a bunch of technical equipment and a tool bag with him. Just heads over to your ship without asking permission and just starts asking various members of the crew uh, some questions. Takes a look at your ship logs. Uh, and then he goes to find Van V. Uh, and he says, uh, uh, Mr. Vantis, can I, can I speak with you for a second? Well, yes, sir. That's me. Just want to double check here. You're signing off that these are uh, hardened hull plates, right? Yep, that, that's the best of our estimation. That's what they are. Right. He nods at you and says, okay. Uh, the meeting resumes six hours later with a very... Passive looking Alexander Nikolaevna and a excited looking his children. Um, as this guy, Burton Guster, comes up to him and says, Well, you know, it looks like they got uh, everything else out in here. Got a uh, you're gonna owe them 60,000 in scrap, at least a hundred thousand for the spike drive and fusion drive you requested. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, these are hard and whole plates. There's not enough of it to cover a ship of this size. It's basically worthless to you. It would require a full refit in a station. I'll take them off your hands for about a million credits, and you can pay them the 200000 out of that. I was wondering if we should have bribed this guy beforehand. <laughs> uh... That he went to talk to you, so <laughs> what do you do, Captain? <laughs> I, Van V, you can make a a roll here if you'd like. <clears throat> roll away. Uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> do I want to make a roll? Yes. What type? To be notice to wisdom. Be oh, 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 oh. Come on, keep the roller coaster going. We went up, we went down. Let's go back up. Okay, okay. This guy is lying to them. He is going to undersell them heavily on these plates and then resell them on the black market. And now that he's got your signature on the paperwork saying that they're nothing but hard and whole plates, you can't reveal the deception without revealing that you yourself are in breach of contract. Uh, so this guy's about to make like a queen, clean 20 million on the black market, reselling these to whoever he can get them on. This is the best day of his entire life. And he, yeah, is, I'm, I'm... he is keeping it in. He's playing a cool character. You get the idea that maybe he goes on wacky adventures with his lying best friend from time to time. And so he's pretty used to hijinks, but... Uh, if you're looking for anything that I can think of out of character as an angle captain, our ship is damaged. And it is at least much closer in size to the plating. I was going to say, how much money do we have? Oh, nowhere near enough to, to cover a million uh, that he's offering. But there is as a far bank as that's here, concerned. right? There is a bank. Uh, theoretically, we could take a loan. Um, you know, I mean, again, this is out of character, but... We we could of course try the after effect of oh hey so we do know what those are <laughs> uh, in yeah. a in a the you problem know, with shadier. blackmailing him is that Part he can it. also blackmail you yeah this, of course exactly this, this is, is a problem. situation where the only way that works out is if everybody yeah. profits uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, uh, another pulling out his gun now <laughs> so I mean another thing <laughs> that we can try to do to cut cost on it is if we offer to do that installation. And have that five hundred thousand go towards oh, us yeah, getting that's plates a, we need ooh, to repair like our own I like ship. That. I like that angle. All right, I'm gonna throw. As that long as I don't do the counter, cut him out of this deal. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's right. Oh man, that's right. As long as I don't follow we'll my say, own so, instructions. About to make a <laughs> that is exactly what, what 
what we're gonna do. <laughs> nice we're gonna spin. do uh, nice. <laughs> uh, so we Quentin's gonna propose chat. to them that that Van V does the install on the the uh fusion engine and the the spike drive and we get that uh you know armored plating that we recently did suffer some damage and we would love to use it to to repair the ship and you know take it with a you know spare parts it out later duster asks to pull alexander aside and you can hear them quietly talking he's just like i've looked after their mechanics logs for how he wants to improve your ship it's a disaster this guy doesn't he can rip a ship down, sure. He does not know how to rebuild them. And we have to try to talk him into it? Convince him? Convince who? Uh, Alexander, right? Like, Duster is counter-convincing counter Alexander that you rolled a two uh -huh. on your guide check. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's, but it's, did but we, he, show, he's did we he's actually show him that document? I don't know. Yes, this uh -huh. is part of the like logs and everything. He's confirming think, yeah, that you have no idea it, what you're yeah. doing in terms of writing this. <clears throat> yeah, so look, you can try to double check and just be like, well, rather than the document, we will do it ourselves. But this guy has a really solid case that you are not the person for this job. Could we could somebody try to make some sort of social role on the basis of yes, it we will tried be to trans we tried to translate it for you, but yeah, that's what we don't know say. your language, it's uh, real difficult, but we could do it ourselves and teach you while we do mm -hmm. it. Is 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 Burton Guster saying this publicly, or you said he pulled him, you pulled Alexander They're aside. having a hushed, whispering conversation that can still be heard throughout the incredibly can, can angular. Can Van V uh, use his that's, silver think, tongue to try to defend I think Van his v honor say, here? Yeah, I think Van V would say something like, you know what, I, I can't write worse shit. How about, just give me a chance to install something on your ship. Put put me to the test. If I can, if I can prove to you that I can install something here, I... <laughs> I, you know, it's one thing, Guster, for you to challenge, you know, our, our evaluation of stuff. It's another to attack me as a mechanic. You know, I, I'm one of the best pilots you've ever fucking met, and I'm one of the best mechanics you've met. Now you're calling out my integrity. I'm going to prove you wrong right here, right now. He leans in next to Alexander and goes, I'm not really sure what being a good pilot has to do with writing good technical documentation. Admiral. <laughs> uh, it's a talk roll with charisma. You need to hit a 10. You have talked yourself into a corner and the difficulty is now high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in Van V. Come on, dice. Motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, and that is a sweet, sweet clutch 11. <laughs> <laughs> so, Daddy needs some new <laughs> Let me understand. Boom, baby. <laughs> what your offer is now your your offer is essentially you will spend months helping them refit the ship with this hull plating that you're also going to oh, buy no, from we were them gonna, no, no, we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna install, install the, the fusion and, engine uh, fusion you're going to install drive. that and also help touch we get up the, the plating. ship yeah, this, is we for get the, the plating. this is for the 500,000 so you're helping fully yeah reseal the ship it's going to be months of work you get the plating and based on some numbers here the plating is still on the table as being worth a million which means that your cut of it is two hundred thousand so you owe them eight hundred thousand uh they owe oh. you a hundred and sixty thousand um thank well, you well no i think what we were trying to say is that we would do the work on the ship, right? Right. right. Minus hey. five hundred thousand. We are now down to yeah. you owe them a hundred and they wouldn't 000. pay. Uh, what's his face? Uh, they wouldn't owe what's his face. Uh, right. Million? They're not. They're not paying him the million. Right. They're paying. We just cut him million. out. Yes, they're yeah. cutting him out based on your recommendation. <clears throat> but for the price of the plating, all the work you're doing, and what they owe you, you owe them one hundred and forty thousand to finish buying the plating back from them. 140,000? Yes. You've also yeah. earned an enemy for life for a guy that knows that you're lying. But of course, you know he was lying as well. So you we may want to think about that. smoothing things over with him as well. Smooth things over with a laser blast. Um, yeah, so I guess we don't have that money, uh, so to speak. There's so. a bank here? Yeah, there's yeah. a bank. To my we point, have to bank. do that. We yeah, do I guess also I understood how we were negotiating. Uh, that, but... Let's see. 
I don't think we really have anything else we can liquidate without. You already us. have a loan. To be clear, you you have a loan already. So the bank's yeah, I mean, willingness can't really to loan credit. you it's more. Really... I mean, this negotiation basically is moot if that's what the uh, ultimate Let's go cost for one is. We can't do role. that. It will be one member of the crew will attempt to convince them to essentially extend you a credit and a payment plan that you will pay back at a later date. You know, uh, Miss Mr. Alexander, if I may, um, we are, our money is our word. I think you probably have heard of the family I come from. Uh, my family's business is very profitable. We're backed by them. We would, we would never miss on a payment or any credit like that. So you can be rest assured. Any 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 deal you have with us is backed by my family. We it's do not first... normally deal with capitalists, and we are not the kind of people that invest in capital but we believe in people make your roll and we'll see how this turns out i guess you're rolling the same skill check again charisma talk yeah. is this the one you have a free re-roll in it's uh, the re-roll ones uh, if it's a one okay. yeah Two and a six or a ten. <laughs> <laughs> you have been straightforward and forthright with us. Your honesty, your dedication to the work, the fact that you have not tried to cheat us in any way. We appreciate all of these things from you. We are willing to extend fellow proletariat with good credit. We can wait for you to come up with the money. Now, if you excuse me, he turns and he clicks his heels. All the members of his family put their hats on and uh, he like calms the bridge and begins a broadcast from the room. And he says, let us stand and salute with our hearts together, workers of Caledon. We have torn the whip from the hand of the slave masters. And in response, they have tried to drown out our union. But now... We shall rise from the surface of Kalanon. It should be mentioned and said that Central has coordinated an epic plan which has acquired a fusion plan, which we will now use to power every house on Kalanon. Our energy needs are no longer needs. They are for all. Stand and rise, workers. Central has authorized five minutes of jubilant dancing. Uh, and like his entire family are all like patting each other on the back live on camera. Um, you can see that uh, Nicholas comes by to you, Quentin. Uh, he's got like a really like an 80 year old style compad uh, that's having trouble loading. Um, he <laughs> shakes it a few times and then says, we are thinking of making a statue of you and your crew members that looks like this and we will put it up in the secondary government plaza. I simply wish for you to sign, to use your likenesses. The service you have done for oh. all of the workers of Kalanon will be remembered in eternity as communism spreads not just from this planet, but throughout the system, throughout the sector, and indeed, until the galaxy and the universe all speak in one voice. It's incredibly generous of you. Um... So it's wow. like Van V standing with a wrench pointed upwardly. Quentin, you're at his side with like a hammer that you're bringing down like this. <laughs> and Minerva is like on a computer, but there's like this brass halo that's around her. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, oh, goodness. Yeah, thank you so much. We would um, not use your likeness without your permission. No, that's... <clears throat> Yeah, that's that's very nice of you. Um, well, shoot, Minerva, Vanfy, what do you think? Check this out. I think my wrench needs to be bigger. Really? <laughs> he opens up a plastic binder and begins flipping through it. I am authorized to allow 20% larger wrench. <laughs> well, all right. I like it. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you'll be you'll be powering, <laughs> powering the planet, helping the people. That's good to hear. 
If you wish, you and all of your crew members can receive honorary citizenship on Kalanam. It can be a difficult life in space. If you need a place to retreat, we are willing to offer you a home. This can be wow. the homeland of strong, hard-working space people. Seems like it might already be. You know, y'all are making a great start. I, I, I think y'all know what you're doing. I, I, I'm certainly pretty happy where I am and keeping this life, but I appreciate the offer. <laughs> Very well. Uh, they begin moving the parts off, and mm -hmm. they are uh, preparing an orbital wouldn't... drop to send the fusion drive down to the planet. Oh, okay. Oh, it's to the planet. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So that it's really, we just have to install the spike drive and yes. like essentially help. And uh, armor the hull the and yeah, yeah, yeah. redo all okay. the electrical system and also Quentin. respace it from a cruiser down to a true frigate. Right. Here we are worried That's about fair. these guys using a grav gun to tear the planet apart. And they're just trying to supply power to that. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know, they definitely 100% have a grav cannon mounted through the spine of the ship. Right, of course. Of I course. mean, <laughs> keeping that intact is a is a strong part of this refit that you're about to do. Yeah. Quentin would go uh, and, and corral Burton Guster and ask him to, to uh, spend, you know, take a, take a trip back to the ship with them. Okay. You're going to teleport outside into space and leave him there? He's cool. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> He's cool. He's calm until the moment that the airlock door onto your ship shuts behind him, and he's just like, well, you really played me out there. I assume you're going to make this right? Well, you know, that's what we're here to chat about. So, uh, yeah, let's let's figure this out. Uh, Van V and Minerva are, are, are here as well. I'm guessing if you want to be, are you guys? Uh, I don't think I would have left you alone. Here. I don't think I would have left you alone with this dude. Just okay. I mean, yeah, Randy, you can you fair. can take better care of yourself far better than uh, I think Van V realizes, but he still feels like he needs to be around just mm -hmm. with his pistol, just in case. And out of out of character, go ahead. There's probably an armature in the room, but otherwise Minerva's looking oh, yeah. to, I mean, to Minerva's on the get ship. work like started yeah, on yeah, the other yeah. ship. Uh, it's just a matter of knowing kind of where Quentin's at in this. And in terms of our feet, like what we actually wanted the armor plating for, it was mostly that we didn't want them to get access to it because they seemed pretty aggressive, essentially, by default. And then there was some desire to maybe use it on the, the, the actual Minerva, the ship. Minerva wants the plating. <laughs> wants the plating would minerva hey, whether, be whether upset it's being... if quentin tries I mean, what... to like get rid of so, like give away some of it hey so it there's not enough of this plating to refit uh the hosta the hosta is too big mm. yeah um but if thinking future plans we could refit the goose with this and the goose can we can modify the hosta to take the um, the goose as a ship like inside a berth right. so we have a cloakable lander so you're saying in season two when we have our own fleet we have a, an, an invisible scout interesting okay all right that, that's basically mm, enough for for what i, I think, I, think I might know cruisers can only carry fighter and shuttle size craft not frigates i believe there's that a, might be correct there's a lander bay that has a that has a landing ship on it for suborbital that carries more cargo than the golden goose does but it's being able to carry more cargo than uh, this is not this. It has it has to be a the, the cargo the, carriers. Oh, the lander use, bay like, you're talking about space are cargo lighters as well. They're only they're literally yeah. just rocket shuttles that go up and down. Yeah, okay. they have no space inside of themselves. Yes. They like use they're literally just cargo pilot. containers. If I remember correctly, yeah. they're they're a Star Trek shuttle. You could you can't yeah, exactly. live inside of them. Essentially, they're literally but... just a cargo space and a chair with a rocket engine. Okay. And okay, so back to Burton Guster. Quentin's in the room with him and mm -hmm. says, uh, you know, re reaches his hand as a look, man. I don't want, I like, I, I want us both to walk away happy here because the, the point of, of this was ultimately that these folks here are intense. And, uh, you know, this is a, this is a, this is a crazy piece of technology. So at the end of the day, I think that we can work together. If you thought you could get rid of this thing, let's do part of that. Like, take 20% of this, this load. Sell it out, cut us in. 20% is worthless. You need the full thing to fully armor a frigate. Maybe you could get two shuttles in. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That there's think about that. That's that's got a lot of use for a now, lot of folks. How about you think about this? I have the contacts. I know the people that we can sell this to. Okay. There are pirates out there that are willing to offer sums of money that would blow your mind for a true <laughs> stealth drive system. I think maybe he's biting his tongue to... right now, but he really doesn't want this system to go to a pirate, right? So no, absolutely not. Look, that's not where we're looking to send this thing, and and that's not what I think that we can offer to you. I'm trying okay. to get us both something. How about a legitimate military organization? I'm more willing to think about it. How but... about you know, just as a, as as me thinking out loud, selling it to Fiana. Fanana, yeah. Look, we have a contact Fanana. with Fanana as well. I mean, you're selling to Fanana. It sounds like you got contacts with Fanana. You don't need me to sell to Fanana, okay? That's true. That's true. I, like I said, I was trying to keep this, you know, the rest of this and spin off 20% to you so that you could have your, your payday. Sure. But I think you could get the best price selling to a trade legion. I got a couple oh. contacts in that regard as well. Private military security... One of them recently just became a government agency. I think you could be looking at not only making a lifelong friend with an army, but making a giant payday. We're talking about security for generations, not just you for life, for your family. If you think, play this right. I think what cap, my captain's trying to get at here is, don't, don't get us wrong, payday's great, but... This type of technology has to go into the right hands. And he's rolling his eyes. He can't believe what he's hearing. <laughs> and, and so you let okay, let's be clear here. From his point of view, you just lied to your employer and signed off on it. And now you're like, but we have to do the right thing. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're the right hand. I mean, this seems clear. <laughs> this guy is is corrupt, just to be clear. Yeah. Yeah, very clearly. Look, if you want to pay him 20% of whatever Fanana offers, he'll take it, but he is going to try to drive a hard bargain to get you to take the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I was hoping he would just take 20% of the stock and spend it off that way, but... I mean, if he's going to trust us to sell it and then we give him the money, not that I'm saying yeah. we cheat him, then that's the best case scenario for us having control over yeah. the disposition of the plating. Yeah, I generally agree with that. Um, I mean, he doesn't oh, really know, have a lot so. of maneuvering room if you want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. I mean, we are we are literally trying other, to throw or... him a bone. Yeah. And I mean, he's he's, he's also say... a loose end, though. Not that I'm saying yeah. we should shoot him, but he's a loose end that he could just turn around, and go tell some pirate guy that we'll pay more. Hey, if you attack this ship, they've got on it. Blah 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 blah. Right. Yeah, I mean, but there are Fanana ships in system that we could literally just like pass this thing off to if we if we absolutely wanted to. That's true. That's true. So a fairy uh, yeah, I think, away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least last, last we knew anyway. Uh, and it helps us set up this new organization. That's also the people true. Who are helping I, and sponsor us. <laughs> Banana is the like safest bet in terms of our current allies. So yeah, I'd say so that's probably have a the Banana wrap on the ship right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to tell Burton, at least in my, as long as that makes sense to y'all, that we'll, right. we'll, we're, we're going to sell this thing. We're, we're going to cut you in. We'll get you, we'll get you 20% of, of what we get. Um, He's not happy, you know. but he gets, uh, you know, he gets an agreement from you handshake 20%. Yeah. And he said, and I say, look, my man, if you're, do you want to get in on this job here with Callan? I mean, this is a ton of work. This will keep you busy for quite a while. If you want to keep making some bank. Sure. I can come in as a consultant at my rates. I'll talk to Gross. Perfect. Fantastic. Does that mean we'd be paying him? Yeah. I mean, basically, he'd be a subcontractor with, with us. I mean, something like that, at least. Yeah, like also, keeps creating, him close. We're creating keep a hostile an work environment. <laughs> so, now both ships are going to have to spend a day getting to the Exchange of Light station, the... I always forget the name of this bad boy. The uh, Colonel Vladimir Mikhailovich Komarov uh, Memorial Station. <clears throat> At that point, you'll be docking and then spending a certain number of days, depending on how you roll, possibly two or more months, uh, 
basically removing all of that junk armor, replacing it. Uh, but it should be noted, you also have to like pull out all the insides of the ship and review all the corridors, make sure all mm -hmm. the electronics and, and air, heating, lighting all work again, checking the grav cannon and making sure that that works as well. Testing the spike drive, getting that installed, because that'll be the... I mean, the spike drive will be the energy source that runs the ship. The fusion plant that's in there is to help boost that grav super collider. <laughs> and ostensibly oh, wow. <laughs> also training the crew and officers how to do their jobs on board. Oh, okay. So we get that could... moment where uh, Minerva is incredibly familiar with grav cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Grav cannon power systems and distribution. <laughs> yeah, I guess somewhere in this time frame we'll be trying to sell this uh, plating to Fanana and get that okay. taken care of. So let me let me just write down everything that we're doing. We're rebuilding the glory of Kalanam. Uh, hanging out with our new friend, with new friend Burton Custer. Mm -hmm. Ben B hates this guy with a passion. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But you're keeping an eye on him. Keep your friends close. Someone who has a similar him. expertise called his bullshit, knows he's lied to him, and now is forced to work with him. <laughs> yeah, but we're both, like, buried in each other's bullshit at this point. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> and he's getting paid for doing nothing. Exactly. In exchange for not screwing himself and us. <laughs> Literally. It's like, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> okay. Here are some things to think about before we do a final scene. You have received a number of messages. Quentin, you have received two messages. One is a response to uh, your censure, and the other is a response to you telling your family that you found the Lost Psionic Academy. Van V, you have received a response to your message asking why you have an uncle and minerva you have two messages waiting for you from prime minister rice okay whose full name is hold on uh bryce cullington dover the 16th esquire the final scene of this episode is mm. sort of like a setting sun on a, on a farm situation we've got the acoustic guitar american uh country lightly playing that lets us know that we're we're about to go into a romance scene <laughs> we see june Cotto. uh he's not wearing a shirt he's significantly more ripped he's definitely he not only does a tan he's starting to get that rednecky look to him you know kind of guy that spent a, a full month working with animals outdoors with no shirt on. Um, he's a short king now, for sure. Uh, <laughs> he slumps down into a rocking chair uh, on the front porch of like a fully wooden uh, patio. And uh, someone puts a cool glass of lemonade with the, the water beating on the outside next to him. And he startles when he looks at it. Uh, Oh, a young woman. And by a young woman, I mean like in her early twenties. And he says, uh, "Oh, uh, sorry, I, uh, I didn't know you were there, Penny." And she says, "Well, I just wanted to talk to you about something real quick. Uh, you know, the fairs tonight. You don't know a lot of people, and uh, I was looking for an escort." Uh, he says, "I really appreciate that, Penny." Um, you know, I don't know a lot of people. I, I'm not sure I'm the right person who should be taking you. And she's she smiles at him and and kind of like I don't know if you guys know what Cabadon is, but she like pins him to the rocking chair and gets her face in his face, and she says, <laughs> "Oh, I know exactly what you're thinking, and it's the same thing I'm thinking." And then you know, <clears throat> the camera pulls up slightly and goes up to the night sky over Lita as fireworks are going off for the festival in the background. It's Quentin's younger sister. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the telepath? <laughs> oh, boy. 
somewhere Quentin's going, there's a disturbance in the force. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really keeping it in the family. All right. <laughs> Quentin, I'll give you Dr. Fish no better. All right. Uh, not find High Tech Psionic Academy. No, yeah. That's fair. I also think that everyone will get the crew XP. Van V. I don't I don't think you accomplished either of your personal goals. No. Nope. Uh can you I will give you learn more about a Yono. You didn't really learn that much about her, but you did learn something, so you'll also get Yono, you'll get increasing your well, you know what? I actually think I'm not gonna give you increasing your resources. You're in debt now. You have negative resources. <laughs> I will absolutely not give you the but XP soon. for We'll be out of debt. Yeah, well, when that happens, you can get the XP then. <laughs> All right. You're 140,000 in debt on top of already being 500,000 in debt. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's really reasonable to say that you have less resources than what you started with. We'll just have to hope that while during the work, uh, during next session, Fanatic comes by and we can make that sale. Yeah. Well, right. when that happens, you'll probably get a big pile of money. <laughs> <clears throat> Beautiful. So that, that put me at exactly 39 of 39 XP. Is that leveling hey. or do I wait till 40? Yeah, that's how much is required. I think that counts. Yeah, you level 39, right now. All right. I get another Foki. Nice. You gotta take on debt to get more money, chat? I mean, listen, they're not farmers. <laughs> they're we need more farmers. loans. I played Subsidy. I know how it works. Oh, <laughs> you have to not have money to make. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I've been really enjoying reading Spoon's comments. <laughs> He's been saying a lot of how I'm feeling about this. Uh, right, it's like yeah, you're definitely Guster calling guy. to the soul of the players, even if like, it's not the soul of the characters. <laughs> so I was like, can't. Can't we just like teleport this guy outside and then teleport back in and say, see you later? <laughs> Look, it's, I just got to say that I could never kill Burton Guster, mostly because my cat's name is Burton Guster. And I feel like Arthur knows this. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. But that is amazing. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger earlier. Just to be clear, Burton <laughs> Guster is the name of the second main character in the TV series Psych. In Psych, yeah. <laughs> He's a proliferate liar who helps cover for Sean. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a reference I missed. But I haven't seen the show, so. Wow. You're, a this show. motherfucker's rewatching Voyager instead of watching Psych. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What are you going to tell me next? You haven't seen right Monk? I've seen, I think, a season of Monk. Well, the great news is that Psych is one of the greatest television experiences of your life. It's so good. All right. So good. Take that is a strong crime. recommendation. <laughs> Look, there was a period of time where you couldn't go 10 seconds without TV having a weird, I'm a detective in something else time period mm -hmm. where it was like, mm -hmm. I'm a detective, but also a mentalist or I'm a detective, but I'm actually a bad doctor. Psych was... I can't be a detective because I have a bunch of crimes on my record, so I can't join the force. I will become a fake psychic and solve the <laughs> crimes. And 90% of the episode is just like, bullshit theory, bullshit theory, absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong, until the end of the episode where he's like, that's it, I finally got it. And everyone's like, wow, Sean, you were great. And then everyone else is like, you just threw things out there until it worked. I don't believe you. And it's like eight seasons of <laughs> who's lying at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I did uh I did watch Bones. Oh, Bones. Ooh, I dude. think that's the only one on that uh, list that I've seen. Lie to me? Right. Oh god, I hate lie to me. Lie to me. <laughs> that's the one where they have like the yeah, giant yeah. room that's lifted slightly <laughs> off the ground and it's glass in redirection, and then they're like, his eyebrow twitched. This is a strong indicator that he's lying. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. that's a bead of sweat. 
<laughs> you see it? <laughs> he killed her. <laughs> yeah, I guess he doesn't. It was super exaggerated. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> like bones. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like the male lead Sykes of bones. But... Better than bones. Yeah, Sykes better than bones for sure. Absolutely. House is better than bones. I did like House. <laughs> that was fun. House does not stand up for a modern rewatch, but it was okay when it came out. I watched House. I marathoned it start to finish because I'd never seen it before last year. Oh, yikes. Wow, I enjoyed it. With Amber? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Petro bitch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, House just commits crimes. crimes all the time. That's the thing. Is that, like... Like, not just medical ones, just crimes. Like... <laughs> it's, it's just crimes, yeah. I mean, he has like half a season where he's in prison. He's literally yeah. just doing doctor stuff in prison. like Convincing other people to commit crimes while in cri- prison. <laughs> Here's the thing about House. I think House made it acceptable in American culture to believe that you can be an asshole as long as you're skilled at your job. I think Mm. that it entered our culture and made it so that people think that that's true. And the problem is, is that for most professions, you are not irreplaceable enough that you couldn't be replaced for being an asshole. I think there's a bunch of people who think they're that good, but don't realize how good you have to be to really be irreplaceable. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) That's definitely fair. I think House had a irredeemable effect on diluting uh, American work culture. Well, any thoughts about this episode before we move on? One ship successfully salvaged, another ship about to get refit. All I know is that you we, we succeeded with Prism in some way, shape, or form, and I feel happy about that because I thought that was going to be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was a disaster. Yeah. I mean, kind of. You know, but... for, for giving a man 20% of your hard-earned liar money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we don't pay him 20%, we don't get our statues. Exactly. And I, hate, I hate to mention it, but you you do owe at least two crew members money you don't have right now. You yeah. owe them 20% each of this job. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, look, yeah, that's, you, we're, we're going to pay him out. For, for, for Dr. Fish, that's questionable. For Iono, it's you contractually obligated. Iono's on the crew, for sure. She's, on the, <laughs> she's on, the, on the ship, 100%. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I believe they are owed uh, 500000 plus uh, 500000 again, plus... What did you five hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the total amount of money you've been paid, and then I'm oh, getting twenty oh, percent oh. of that. So five hundred thousand like, for the spike drive and the fusion drive. One million. Oh, sorry. Then it's five hundred thousand for the refit job, which brings it mm-hmm. up to a million, and then they're paying a million for the armor plating. So they're owed twenty percent each. I mean, again with fish, it's questionable, but of two Do million we... dollars. We got paid a hundred for the spike drive and the fusion. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, we made a hundred for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right about that. You're right about that. Okay, so either way, it's Price. still gonna be you owe them hundreds of thousands of dollars that you don't have. So it's a hundred, one point six million. No, one hundred sixty thousand a piece. No, no, no. Plus the we we, we bought the plating bought the plating we bought so the plating million, for a mil. right and so we get 20 percent of the we we bought the plating for a mill so we're at like 1.16 well, and then 20 percent of that and then the 500 000 then, they're paying 20 percent of the 20 percent would be i know that 500 came out of the the million we're doing the the labor as a discount off the price and then we had to borrow the that. remaining 140 to make up the rest of that mill all right the the I'm going to sit down and do the finances later. Okay. This has gotten confused. <laughs> they definitely are paying you 500000 which will be a significant... 20% of that twice will be a significant chunk of money just on its own. That's the 500000 for doing the refit. I know you're using yeah, okay. that money to buy yeah. the plating, but... 
that only matters for the ship's account, you still owe your crew. You also need to decide whether Dr. Fish is getting a full 20% or what's going on there. Yeah, all right. We'll work out the payment schedule with sure. everyone. We're going to have to sit down and do some spreadsheets on this one. That sounds uh, good. <laughs> It's it's still we're, we're gonna I, have to do an income statement and yeah I just want to make sure you understand that you owe even more money than you think you owe because you haven't paid your crew and that's typically a really bad move. Well, you know, we'll pay them. <laughs> I don't think uh, Iono uh, it can go anywhere. She is officially assigned to us. So. I mean, <laughs> but she is also officially owed a bunch of money. Money. Yeah. I'm Gee. not disputing that yeah. by any means. We will pay. I mean, she Yono could go. She'll go related. to Fanana, and Fanana will uh -huh. be like, well, you're in arrears right now. This is a problem. I mean, you know, technically the corporation that is Golden Goose LLC was paid these funds, and they will be paid oh out God. their portion of that. <laughs> you owe the ship money? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's not how that works, food. Don't even try to convince people of that. Did we finally break a ship? I think the answer to that is yes. We absolutely yeah. broke a ship. Now we're yeah. going to break another ship and then put it back together. And crack yeah. that bad boy. We'll break a bank. And... Your living expenses, food, clothing, oxygen. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> These are costs. <laughs> Payroll taxes. But where a terror you living on the ship. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? It sounds if you want to do that, you're gonna have to mark down for me what you're charging your crew to remain on the ship. <laughs> and know that you technically need to pay them more than that to keep them on the ship. <laughs> I don't care. There is no circumstance where someone in the modern space age will work for you and put themselves in slave arenas. Yeah, I'm gonna look up what their their like you know wages are supposed to be, and we'll we'll get <laughs> they will get their money. Don't worry, we're not gonna keep all the money ourselves. <laughs> okay, they are gonna get daily wages on daily wages plus the twenty percent. Um, well, I guess technically Doctor Fish is not on daily wages, but. Banana's representative is. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, other than quibbling <laughs> over financial terminology. <laughs> I was not expecting the statue thing. <laughs> you are heroes to our people. Like, really? Because yeah. well, we're really laying communist. the guilt on now. So <laughs> That's true. Imagine if your deception is ever revealed, that statue will be torn down and burned live on television. <laughs> your name's forever reviled for all communists forever. <laughs> all the more reason It'll for a bigger fine. wrench. Harder to tear down. <laughs> e easier to tear down if you're holding the wrench over your head. And It'll it be so more. tall, they can't be chained down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait if we don't blow this for the statues to become points of conversation in other places in the sector. Like, aren't you the guys who are the statues for the cyber hey, commune? Just, like, to be, what is just to be clear, you guys are in the secondary government annex. Like, Central is getting a statue dedicated to it. The four Russians are all getting a statue dedicated individually to each of them for their brilliant part in executing this plan. You're being remembered as heroes of the proletariat, but just to be clear, Quentin is also a slave master holding a whip over the hungry masses as an ambassador to a major government. Right, yeah. Like, no matter what, I'm not really <laughs> on there. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not a worker. First off, you're a captain <laughs> of a ship, so automatically exactly. you think you're above other people. And they just paid me a bunch of money, and like, eh, da, 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 da. like no matter how you look at it, I'm violating their principles. <laughs> <laughs> but they're gonna retell a story about comrade Quentin right. and his crew and the glorious yeah. labors that they've done on behalf of the people of Kalanop. that's right if you really want to improve your image you can get uh get greasy with the rest of us <laughs> yeah well, you know, he'll do work 
right now we've got to do math. Yeah, we, we've got time during the week to do the math. <laughs> All right. Here's my take on it. You were you got 20% uh, equaling 100000 for the equipment. Then you are fully paid 500000 So we're at 600000 now. And then out of that $1 million for the armor plating, you are owed 200000 That all tracks, which means you, you owe each crew member technically a 20% slice of 800000 does that sound right? I think that's all of the Maybe. money you are paid. Well, you know what? You have a full week to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good. I'm ready. And then the ship still owes 140000 to the people of Kalanam held in trust for their respect for you. Right. Did anyone level or anything crazy like that? I leveled. Pick, picking a folky now. Yeah, diplomat level three, maybe level four. Is it's that fun. your gigantic <laughs> clock? Is is that your gigantic pile of hit points there? Uh, oh gosh, what did it you is? Get? Except I forgot. I forgot to include the warrior bonus too. Forty three plus oh. <laughs> another twenty something. Like you're, you're what? What level are you? Seven. So fourteen more. Because I, you get double for your con mod. I have a con mod of one, so that's uh, and, right. And the warrior seven, gives you two more 14, hit points. Eleven. So no, I think it's just one more hit point. So I had seven more, so I'm at fifty. If it's two more, then I'm at fifty-seven. <laughs> but I was actually it's a just gigantic at, pile of hit points. And the only time I've been hurt all campaign is when I fell in the ship. <laughs> Two, Don't worry, if you want to get hurt, I'm sure AP will shoot you. Like, there's plenty of people we've been getting in trouble with. <laughs> it's, it's funny, I'm sitting here, like, this is the last time I can take a pokey, just, and I'm just like... Just imagine all the chances you'll get. Or do I just... Just, just you know, imagine all like, the chances you'll get to use those hit points if we try to investigate the drug war. <laughs> that's what, I'm, I feel like connected level one or diplomat level two is what we need. But... <laughs> but... The other thing to think about is what you're going to do after refitting the ship is done, which could take longer or shorter, depending on how your role to refit the ship goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? A short term goal that I didn't. didn't get. I mean, Minerva would like to do things that promote our, our fledgling organization. Having money would help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got to sell, you know, to Panana. That's like our main, you know, short-term thing to get ourselves out of the, uh, out of the number of problems that we're in. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that's definitely number one on the, the short list in terms of where we would go next or what we would do. Uh, we do have a riddle to solve with Zana. Uh, we have a, you know, June Koto. He's sitting there having his idyllic life back on Lita. Uh, but I didn't realize we were going to go back map. just to check on June Koto. No, we're not. I'm just saying, like, he's, we got that scene. So that's just a quick reminder that, yeah, he did give us a, a puzzle to solve that we we could work on. Uh, oh, we've got that blind jump. Away. Which at the very least, jump. even if we don't find anything there, we can sell that runner. True, true. You know, it seems uh, crazy good as a folky right now. It makes no sense, so I won't take it, but Ironhide. Innate armor class. Of Ironhide 15, is hilarious. <laughs> plus your character level rounded up. Oh, half your character level rounded up. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll just, you know, go from 14 right up to uh, 18 just like that. Yeah, Ironhide's crazy. amusing, says the second level of it, but. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's not options. Get you treated as if you're in power armor. Yeah, that's not happening. It's funny, but that's not happening. Do you have, are you leaning towards something right now to take? I, I think it's between Tinker or Specialist, uh, mm -hmm. Specialist Fix. And Specialist Fix feels better, but Tinker would save us money if we actually start modding shit. Tinker, Tinker wouldn't really help in like what we just did in repairing stuff. So, yeah. I don't know. It call. seems like Specialist both would be useful for your hyperboating. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think specialist for the short term putting a ship back together. <laughs> I think specialist t- uh, specialist fix is better. Mm. If I start ignoring the money component, <laughs> we'll just keep selling pretext stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> you can take that up to the next level with an extra point too. Yeah. But you get your your three XP towards that skill for taking the first rank in it. Yeah. Uh fix is already at plus two. So it'd be three XP pre spent towards the next Yeah, I think that's next what rank. I'm gonna do. Although I did just move two things from negative one to zero, so I'll have to move those back. I think it was working. So it, it, you know it's when you take the, the talent the talent comes with three extra XP that can only yeah, that are already spent one. towards that skill. You don't have to allocate the stuff you get already from leveling. Uh, yeah. And that's okay. just for the first rank of some of these yeah. talents. I thought it was, you had to spend your XP to get that first rank. No, no, no. Yeah. You get three free when you take the focus three points right. of XP no, to good. spend. I'll bump it and then reduce my work back down to negative one. Dice pool, 3Ds. And then, yeah, if you, with your specialist thing, if you go to your skills tab, you can edit the skill to set it to default to the 3D6. You don't have to keep doing that on your fixed skill. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Do your, does your guys' uh, um, foundry, like, really go really slow? Everything else seems to work fine, but foundry's like... Nope, eight, eight, I haven't five. had any issues. Yeah, same, All right? Must be something on my end. All right, work goes back to negative one. I guess that's fitting. Van V doesn't know how to work. <laughs> okay. It is funny. The list of stuff you listed for us that we need to do to make the check. I was just kind of like, well, good thing I have to do fix because I have a negative one in literally every single one of these. You've hyper specialized for sure. Yeah. I did like how you we, you did that lead role, and I was like, "Well, we did role play that I'm helping you, even though your role is way worse than mine." <laughs> it, yeah, it is it. it is the thing to do. I it's mean, the, the dice the dice knew they knew, <laughs> and I love how that came back. It's just like, oh, this is so horrifically written. Oh, exactly. That's what the other one was. That goes back. It was good. <laughs> even in English, I don't think it would have been that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do enjoy owning really bad roles. They can um, be a ton of fun. You have to. It was it? Uh, I think AP was it you that were telling us recently of um, someone does like a house rule for some system where Brennan Lee Mulligan, uh, yeah. You, but like you pick the one that's more extreme from ten. So you you I when, love that when the roll is dramatic, you roll two d twenties and you pick the one furthest from ten. Yeah, yeah. So that way you're not getting like a nine or ten or eleven. You're getting like a four or an eighteen. Yeah, I love yep. that. In concept, I'm sure as a player, I might hate it after a few times, but <laughs> I think I think I would enjoy it. Statistically, it will work out for you slightly better than it won't because. Uh, Starting at ten means that you've got a point five. Anyway, statistics. Uh, yeah, because the average would be ten and a half. So if your low end is ten, then you you have more space to go up rather than down. Yeah. I have to figure out character arrangement. I think we're good for next week, but not the week after that, right? Yes. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. You guys have a lot to think about. So much to do, so much to see. Excited. I think we're probably about three to four episodes away from the season one finale. Uh, we'll probably take like a one week break off at that point to talk about how we want to do the second season, and then the second season will be the second season. Cool. Sounds like a plan. Also, Minerva found a jump gate. Well, kind of. But she didn't <laughs> tell anyone again. No, <laughs> yeah. that's not true. Told Iona. It's her Iona project. told you. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I gave Iona the uh, the math. I didn't just ask to look at her data and then just go, hmm, curious, and walk out of the room. 
<laughs> Panoramic <laughs> screenshot pocket. capture mode. Got it. See it. <laughs> All right, Ooh, yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to start wrapping things down here, and uh, we'll see you next week. Make sure to All comment right, on good. this video on the YouTubes. Clay 8, I need my next short-term goal. Wow. <laughs> You're really farming out short-term goals to, to the audience. Give, the, give yourself some credit.